Hey everyone, in today's lesson, we're gonna look at a very famous song by The Weeknd, Blinding Lights. Uh, there's a deconstruction here. Basically, it's the parts of the recording played in Soundtrap. Not all the sounds are perfect, but the sounds that are here are representing the different parts. So there is a pad sound, which is outlining the chord progression. There's a very simple beat, and there is a lead line that is played here with this particular sound. There are other sounds here that you can just click and look and find and see if there's something better. And today's lesson is gonna focus on just the bass line, the bass part, and playing the bass that fits the song. And if you listen to the song, it is adding some extra notes. I'm gonna play it two ways, or I'm gonna draw it in, and actually it would be great if you can do the same thing. So if we look at this sub bass part, this is the sound that was uh, picked for this particular track here. And if I play this on the keyboard, I'm seeing that it is uh, an F here. I'm gonna move this octave up or down, I'm sorry, to C here, and it's an E flat and it's a B flat. If you're using a typing keyboard and C0 is at the bottom, this is C1, this is F1, and you can use the W to play that particular note. If you have a touch pad or something like that, you can actually click on this note. The W is for the typing keyboard. It is not the actual name of the note. The name of the note is F. There's no such thing as a W in music. The musical alphabet goes from A to G. That's an A, as we could see. This is B, this is C, there's A again. B, C, D, E, F, G, then it repeats, A, B, this is middle C here. Again, if we're look, listening to this, these bass parts, if I play it way up, way up here, it's not a bass part anymore. If I play it down here, it's a sub bass. We could hear it's playing these sub frequencies below a certain threshold. And that's why it sounds very deep sounding, very round sounding. And we're gonna play what we call whole notes. We're gonna hold out the note for four complete beats. Uh, it's gonna be held out for the whole entire measure. That's why it's called a whole note. So here the metronome is on. We could hear the clicks. The tempo of this piece is 85 beats per minute. We're using the sub bass sound. The keys are F. C to outline the chord progression. The whole song is just four chords, all right? Uh, what you're looking at here is really the parts of the song, but the beginning, you're just hearing this, and then when the vocal comes in, you're not hearing that line. But really, this is the gist of the whole song here. So the first thing to do is to look at the uh, pad sound that's outlining the chord. So why don't I just click on this, and I'm gonna play them on the keyboard so you can physically see the keys. So the first chord of this song is what we call an F minor. It's an F with an A flat and a C. And then it goes down to this chord. Then it goes to an E flat chord. And then it goes to a B flat chord. Now the bass line is gonna play the notes lower. It's gonna outline the roots of this chord I'm gonna do it two ways. I'm gonna do it four beats each, and then I'm gonna do a second track where I'm just gonna play some passing tones to go down, and that's what they do on the record. All right, so let's just listen to what we have without the bass. So we can tell it sounds a little empty without the bass in there. And we're gonna add the bass. So if we look at the notes of the chords, first note is F, that's the root. I'm just playing the bottom notes here. C, E flat, B flat. And the notes on the typing keyboard would be W, comma, the number one key, 
and the number five. And we want to play them four beats each. We want to play them on what we call the downbeat. So when we count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We want to hold it for four beats if we're physically playing it. If we're drawing it in, that's a separate thing. We just need to extend it. So let's draw it in. I'm going to just click here to form a region. I'm going to extend it to the end here. I want to look at this so that I can see the grid properly. And as we can see, the playhead is kind of in the way here. So now this is the, we want to play F. And that's too low. Let's go back and see what the range would be for this. We said W, comma, one, five. So we could physically play it with the typing keyboard. We could play with a USB MIDI keyboard, or we could draw it in. So let's look at drawing this in. And how do we do that? We have to look at the piano roll. So I'm going to click here, piano roll. I have my pencil tool ready. There's my F. And now I want to go down to C. And I want to go to E flat. And the last one is B flat. And those are my notes. And we could see it's the whole measure. I zoomed out, so that's why these look the way they do. This is the first beat. One E and uh. Here's two. Two E and uh. Let me get the pointer so you could see this. It's hard to see. This is one E and uh. Here's the second beat. Two E and uh. Here's the third beat. Here's the fourth beat, that's the measure. First measure, second measure, third measure, fourth measure. It's just four measures of this. So now I'm gonna, draw, I drew it in, now I'm gonna physically play the typing keyboard and you're gonna see that. So I just drew it in. I'm gonna duplicate the track. I'm gonna mute this now. And I just wanna delete these notes because it deletes, it copies the whole thing. And now let's look at the instrument. And it always does this. We want to look at it this way. So if you're using the typing keyboard, you're going to press W, C, E flat, B flat. I'm going to record it. You're going to physically play it live. That's really the best way to do this. I just showed you how to draw it in. If you want to draw it in, you could do it that way too. Three ways. So let's just click on this. The other track is muted. My metronome is on. My tempo's on. I practiced it. I'm ready to go. I hit record. I hit the clicks. Slower tempo. Two, three, four. Go to C. Or a comma. One or E flat. And I gotta play right on the downbeat. That's it. Now, if I played the notes wrong, I do not need to redo this whole thing. I can just look here and say, okay. That's a little long, but you know what? It actually is good. It's going to make it smoother. It's not going to cut off. And I'm going to leave it off there. Now let's listen to it. Sounds fine. That's the bass line. Now, on the recording, there is another part. So if you want to get fancy, those of you that want to do something a little special here, I'm going to duplicate this, and we're going to talk about passing tones. So I'm going to mute this, 
And I'm gonna delete these right now. And I'm gonna physically play this and I'm gonna play those passing tones in here. So you're gonna see the keyboard again. And again, it always does this. Let's look at it this way. It's a W key, the comma on the typing keyboard, the one, the five, but now I'm gonna play different notes to go down. These are passing tones, part of the F minor scale. I know it's available to me and that's what they do on the recording. So let's just record that in now and you'll see that it sounds a little bit more interesting. All right, so here we go. I'm ready to go. I have my metronome on, tempo's 85. I hit record. I'm gonna hear eight beats before I have to start playing and I'm gonna get ready to play this note. I want you to see it as well. There it is. I'm gonna lower this a little bit. Might be distorting. One, two, three, four. Passing tones now. Two. And that's it. We could see those extra notes. They lead right into the F. So do I have to replay this if I made a mistake? No, I was a little bit late here. If we zoom out, it's always good to do that. We could, I could see what I did. And there it is. It looks good to me. Just moving the things, moving the notes, the length around. And let's hear it. There you go. So this is the baseline to the song by the weekend called Blinding Lights. That's the actual baseline. Uh, don't know if it's that, that's not the exact sound, but that's what we have in Soundtrap. There's other sounds. You could experiment with this and try different sounds that you think is better. I think there's a better sound than this. For the lead, there's a bit of a bright sound in there. I forgot the name of it. I think what they were trying to do on the record is recreate some the sound of the 80s really this sounds like an 80s track to me um i definitely think it's a roland uh jupiter 8 that was used on aha if you know that song by aha uh it was a big hit it has a very uh, same synth lead part that's in there um and that was a roland jupiter 8 type of sound very bright very buzzy kind of sawtooth wave type of sound. All right, so that's it. So I suggest that anyone um, to try to play this bass line, you're matching the chords here. You're outlining the chord progression, four simple chords. Um, you could play it with the typing keyboard. Whole notes, if we're looking at it, it's the W, the, C, the, the comma, the one, the five. Play them for four beats. If you want to do the passing tones, it's doing this. It's going from the B flat here to the G, and it goes back to the F. That's it for today's lesson. Uh, actually, you know what? One more thing. I'm going to play this so you can hear the function and the role of a bass in a song. I'm going to um, duplicate this one more, and then I'm going to play the wrong notes. And you're going to see how important it is to, to, to play the right notes, and especially if you're a bass player in a band. Uh, a lot of times the bass is focusing on one note at a time, but if the bass player plays the wrong note, everyone notices this. If the piano player plays a wrong note, you got ten fingers, you got voicings, you could leave a few things out here and there. Uh, nobody's really going to notice that. But if the bass player hits what we call a clam and they're hitting the wrong note, it changes the whole function of the harmony. And I'm going to play this purposely, purposely wrong. I'm going to play the first note right, and then I'm just going to play some of the wrong notes, and it's, you're going to see how it's going to clash. It's just going to mess the whole thing up. So that's something I wanted to do for my students so that they see 
how important the function of a bass is. It's really the foundation for the harmony here. And I'm going to click record. Everything else is muted. First note's going to be correct. The rest are going to be wrong. You might want to put earplugs in for this. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. All right, can we hear that? Let's hear that again. Yeah, you don't want to do that, definitely. Here's the right part. Let's hear that one more time. That's it for today's lesson. Great song by The weekend. Blinding Lights. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. See you next time. Bye.